legendary along the trace, that lonely, dangerous wilderness road leading from the Ohio to Natchez on the Mississippi. Wherever it was uttered, the name of Bowie brought strength to the weak, honor to the brave, and struck terror to the hearts of the cruel and crafty. Yes, Jim Bowie was a giant among men, but even giants get hungry, and Jim Bowie was no exception. <laughs> Sorry, Miss. Uh, I had no idea, Miss. What do you yeah, think I'm you're sorry. doing anyway? Well, you dress like a man, you're going to get treated like what one. What does that make? You can't go around attacking people. Well, you behave like a thief. You got to take your chances like a, a thief. A thief? <laughs> sure, that's my bird you're taking. It most certainly is not. I shot it. You shot it? <laughs> I did. Well, I did hear two shots. Well, that was the bird I aimed at. Maybe, but it was my shot brought him down. Don't you touch that bird, mister. I'll shoot you for poaching. This is my land. Your land? Well, who, who are you, the governor's lady? I don't think that's any of your business who I am. Well, when I meet a pretty woman like you, I at least like to know her name. Get off my land right now. Go on. Yes, ma'am, but uh, not without my duck. <laughs> Now get out. I don't believe you. Let me go. No, you don't. Now, what is the minute? This is the question of life and death. The doctor. I must see the doctor. Miss Dan, what are you doing to that man? Oh, it's you, Mr. Gottschalk. He says he wants a doctor. My wife is sick. She came to the door of the cabin this afternoon. You went to my cabin? Yes, I did. I went to tell you to move. Well, I'm very sorry, naturally, but I still want you off my land. But the land is not used except for hunting. I thought it was all wilderness, free to all. Well, why didn't you go look it up in the land office before you went ahead and built your cabin? Miss, this is a new country for me. I didn't know anything about land offices. Honestly, I didn't understand. Well, you understand now. You'll have to move at least half a mile up the river. All right. I'll move it. Just give me a few more days. Miss, you are a woman. My wife is going to have a baby. After all these years of marriage, baby, She's very frightened, very sick. Let me talk to the doctor. No. Look, all I want to ask, well, the baby, if, if, if my wife, don't you let me talk to him? No, I will not. And if you're not off my property by tomorrow noon, then I'll have you put off. I do not like fighting. But if you try to put me out of my home when my wife is sick, I'll bet you. All right, then. I'll burn you out. Now, go on and get out of here.
You really aim to burn him out, Miss Regina? Well, that's what you've been advising me to do, isn't it? It's the only way to treat spotters, ma'am. All right, I want him off my land by tomorrow. Take care of it. Gun. I have another shot. Drop the gun. Who are you? Why didn't you ask that before you shot? So just a warning. I thought it was someone else. Yeah, I thought it was someone else, too. I thought you were a girl dressed in buckskin. Miss Regina, do you know her? Slightly. She stole a bird of mine, and I aim to get it right now. Wait! Don't go in there! You know, hon? It's me, Katri. You feeling better? It's my wife. Very sick. I'm sorry, sir. I made a mistake. I was sure you had something to do with that girl in Buckskin. I thought you were the man whom she sent to put me off the land. No. No, my name's Jim Boy. I'm from Opelousa. Please. I'm Johan Gottschalk from Austria. Why did she want to put you off the land? It's her land. I didn't know when I came here. It's all a part of the great Bienbo plantation. Tiny corner. Bienbo, huh? She wants to... Put you off. That why you took a shot at me? Yeah. I'll move all right, but not at once. You've seen my wife. I can't move her in her condition. Why don't you have a talk with the girl? I did. She wouldn't listen. She's a selfish woman. <laughs> she sure is. How about her father? He's dead. It's she who decides now. Mm. Regina. Regina Biambo. Yeah, I heard that name. Johan! I'm here, darling. If only there were a doctor. For the baby's sake. Oh, and for you. Don't worry. I don't think it will be long now. Rest, Legion. She's afraid. She's not the only one. Well, you know, um, baby's been getting born a long time. It's our firstborn. Even if I would know what to do. She's ill. She needs a doctor. Well, let's get one. The nearest is at St. James Parish. It's impossible. Maybe not. I have a horse. No, thank you. There is a doctor. Close. Only as far as the BMO plantation. Great, famous doctor, but he won't come here. He won't come? What's his name? Uh, I think it's Beauchamp. Be Beauchamp? Of course. That's where I've heard the name Biembo. Where are you going? To the Biembo plantation to get the doctor. Thank you, but it's no use. I've tried. Don't you worry, Mr. Gottschalk. I'll get him. Where's the plantation? Just an hour down the trace. Then I'll be back in two hours with the doctor. You just tell the baby to hold on till I get back. for Dr. Beauchamp. No, sir. I can't let nobody see. Well, you, you tell him it's Jim Bowie from Opelousa. He'll see me, all right. I got my orders. The 
doctor's not to be disturbed. Well, I'll tell him myself. No, sir, I'm sorry. Hank? Hank Beauchamp? Hey! You're a little loud, ain't you? Yeah, I am when I want to be. Well, you're in the wrong place, mister. You better go. Stop it, Dad! Stop it! Oh, so it's you. Are you still persisting about that silly old duck? Well, miss, you didn't invite me to dinner, so I came along anyway. Any of my duck left? You're a very rude man. Maybe, but then it's not exactly polite to kick a man in the pants and steal his bird. At least that's my opinion. We're not interested in your opinion, sir. Now, I must ask you to leave. Not till I see the doctor, Miss Gamble. You know who I am. Yeah, I met Johann Gottschalk. Oh, so this is another one of Mr. Gottschalk's tricks. I don't know about tricks, miss, but his wife's going to have a baby, and she's real sick. Don't you believe it, Aunt Priscilla? It's just an excuse for him to stay here on my land. But if it was an excuse and she was to die, how would you feel then? I tell you, I don't believe it. But if you're wrong, you don't care, do you? Get another doctor. Dr. Beauchamp is here for a rest, and he doesn't wish to be disturbed. In that case, he doesn't deserve to be called doctor. Gant, drive this man away. With pleasure, ma'am. Hey. Come on. Hey, that's, that's my game you're playing there, Your Mr. horse is this way. Hmm? Oh, yeah. <coughs> What's going on here? Stop that. Be with you in a minute, Hank. Jim! Now, look, you keep pulling a knife and someone's going to get hurt. You, most likely. Now, go on, get out of here. Go on, get out. Hello, Hank. Jim, how are you? Nice to see you. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Dr. Beauchamp. I, I didn't know you knew this man. Well, it's about time you did. This is Jim Boy from Opelousa. His family and I are old friends. Uh, we've met, Hank. Uh, Jim, uh, what's all this about? Well, there's a lady up the trace away who's going to have a baby, and she's mighty sick. When I heard you were here, I came for help. Surely you can get another doctor. There's none close enough, miss. But what about my guest? Miss Priscilla's right, Jim. It would be a little inconvenient for me to get away right now. After all, the party is in my honor. I thought you doctors took an oath that your profession would come first. Since when has it been inconvenient to save a life, Hank? I'm sorry, Miss Priscilla. After all, I am a doctor, and Mr. Bowie had to remind me of it. It's been a long time since I delivered a baby, Jim. I may not remember how. It'll come back to you. <laughs> may I borrow a horse? Of course, uh, James. You know, Miss Regina, a woman would be a great help, too. Yes, she would. You, you don't expect me to go there. You're a woman, aren't you? To be a great help, Regina. Or do you belong in buckskin? My horse, too, James. Mr. Gottschalk, here's the doctor. Doctor. How do you do, sir? How are you? Katrina. Doctor. Yes. Very famous doctor. He'll be all right now. Sit down, doctor. Thank you. Sit down, please. I didn't think you can do it, Mr. Bowen. I told you. Miss Bimbo. She's come to help, too. You to hell. Danke. It's a comfort to have it, the woman. Has there been much pain? Much pain. It does not let it up. <laughs> well, the labor's started. I don't think it'll be long now. We'd better get ready. Well, you'll have to tell me what to do, Doctor. Well, I think we should have a screen of some sort up here, and then I'd like some hot water and some towels. Right. Thank you. And Mr. Godshaw. Get a blanket and put it across here. Yeah. Yo! Uh, Mr. Boy, you get some hot water and uh, keep the fire up because we mustn't let the room get cold now. Yes, ma'am. Hi, 
I'll take it. No, I'll take it. No, I'll take it. You take it. Oh, here, I'll take that. Uh, will you men go and sit down someplace? This is a woman's job. Yes, ma'am. You take. No, you take. Regina, you like a cup of coffee? No, thank you. I'll be quite all right. Why are you staying here, Mr. Bowie? You don't seem to be helping much. Sure I am. I'm the Indian medicine man. I'm protecting her from evil spirits. Meaning me? Could be. Sir, and take a walk. Can my legs wobble? They do. Plenty of chances to make sure for yourself, Johan. Here. With Katrina. A uh, little trouble. No, the doctor's still with her. You all right, Miss Regina? Yes, I'm, I'm quite all right. Sun's up. It's been a long night. The longest in my life. Please, God, I don't want to lose her. I can. He's a good doctor, Johan. Oh, no. I, I forgot about Gant. You said to burn me out. Are those your men out there? I, I didn't mean that. I might have known. Johan, you cover me. Please. You folks stand back. I can't see anything. Just fire toward the wagon when I go. You ready? All right.
sure of it. No! No, no! Why not? You're gonna kill us! No! All right, Scan, get on your feet. Come on, get up! Why, Miss Regina, what are you doing here? Never mind, Dad. Just clear out of here. You go as far and as fast as you can, and don't you ever come back. But you said... Well, Miss Regina, he was just carrying out your orders, wasn't he? That's right. It was her idea. Believe me, I'm sorry. But you were helping my wife and then do a thing like that. Why? I don't understand. I, I said I was sorry. I, I never intended for Gant to go through with it. Well, if it was a bluff, it was a dangerous one. I almost got caught in your own trap. I said I was sorry. <coughs> what do you want me to do? Get on my knees and beg you to forgive me? I'm not asking for forgiveness. I don't deserve it. You can stay on the land, Mr. Godshawk. I'll give you a title to it if you'll stay. You mean the land? I don't know what to say. Mr. Godshawk, Jim. You got your orders. Get going. Well, your wife's over the west, Mr. Godshawk. I think she's going to be all right. I am ashamed, Doctor. I, I have no money to pay you right now, but I like to say what I say to Miss Regina and Mr. Bowie. Thank you very much. God bless you. Well, young man, just do me one favor. Anything you say, Mr. Bowie? Call him Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Before I say goodbye. Oh, must you? I'll be needing a new overseer soon, and I thought that... No, uh, I wouldn't be much good as your overseer. I'd be spending too much time around the boss. You wouldn't find me complaining. <laughs> well, that's tempting. I guess this is where I say goodbye. Goodbye, Regina. For now. Goodbye, Hank. Goodbye, Jim. Say hello to your mother and reason. Yes, I'll do that. Hey, Jim. Yeah? I thought you might just like to know there were two bullets in that duck. Then I owe you an apology. You're quite a woman, Regina. Yes, ma'am, quite a woman. <laughs> Fighter, a fearless and mighty adventurer. 